because I wasn't ready. <laughs> okay, you want some mask? Good okay, for you. thanks so much. But shooting on a TLR means that I had to learn to see in the square format. That was essentially me sharing my contact sheet with you. Hello photographer, welcome back to my channel. It's Belinda and this is where we talk all about photography from inspiration to camera techniques to editing skills so that you can take better photos. This video is inspired by Vivian Meyer, who is a photographer greatly known for her street photography. Specifically, she's known for shooting on a Rolleiflex TLR, which is why her images has a signature square format black and white look. So this is a TLR that I'm using. It's not a Rolleiflex, it's a really old Chinese brand that I don't even know if it still exists. Do let me know if you managed to find out or you've seen this brand around. It's a 75mm focal length. Middle format cameras have a crop factor of 0.55. So the way you derive at this focal length of a 35mm equivalent is to multiply 75 by 0.55 which gives me 41 mil that is for your information as for the film i have loaded a roll of hp5 400 middle format film into my camera to go with it for the last few months i've been working really hard on the idea of actually shooting street photography like how i would on a 35 mil on a middle format camera which is a totally different ball game after a few trials i finally managed to shoot a roll that i'm happy about which I'm gonna share with you guys. So we're gonna look at the point of view, how these images came to be, and I'm gonna briefly run you through how I developed these images at home and scanned them as well. Lastly, I'm gonna share with you guys what I learned from experience of shooting streets on a TLR. So without further ado, let's dive right in. This role was meant to be an exercise for myself to get used to shooting motion on streets on a TLR. It's going to be a challenge and so I decided to warm up a little bit by photographing the construction work that's going on. They usually move a bit slower than the average human being and so this would be a great starting point. Am I in the shot? Yeah, you got in. Am I? Can you take me out? <laughs> oh, really? Can you take me out? Oh. It's filmed though. Is it good? It's filmed though. What's, what's it for? What's it for? It's just for my YouTube channel. For your own purpose? Yeah, for my own okay, purpose. Okay, my dear, I'll let you have it. So on camera shot, you see that? Oh yeah, I see yes, that. I am. One thing that I kind of struggle with when using this camera is the fact that it's like reversed, left to right. What appears on the left is actually on the right in reality. And so it does take some mental gymnastics for me to actually work it out especially when I'm on location and that I don't have the time to slowly just go through the shots and it's actually a challenge on film cameras like this because like apparently there are only 12 frames that I've got on this roll and that's why I'm not going to waste it on compositions that I think are not on point which further adds to the difficulty of getting shots on the camera like this. When I first saw this spot, there was really harsh light hitting onto the ground through the lanterns which were hung up because it's almost Chinese New Year and this created lovely shadows on the floor and I was waiting for a good composition to incorporate this pattern into. But as you shall see with this time lapse, the sun was so unpredictable and in a split second, the shadows would be gone and in another, it would reappear. And all this while, I was trying to hold a conversation with a guy who happens to be very amazed by my camera while I tried making sense of the horizontally reverse orientation all in all, a very complicated task. I'm gonna wait for a person to go into there, like into the shadows, and then I'm gonna take a shot, but a lot of it just boils down to luck, I guess. Time. All the time in the world. For as long as there's light. I probably, like, time my shots. Mm. Yeah, I got you. Okay. I got you. Got it. I'm, I'm impressed that you're using something ancient. So how are you finding London, or are you missing what you want? Can't wait to go back. Probably a permanent move here. You're gonna move here permanently? Wow, I'm impressed. Okay. Bye. Bye. I suspect that my brain power increased after that encounter. Okay, to be fair, the weather forecast said that it would be partly overcast and partly sunny today. So I shouldn't be expecting it to be sunny all the way. Now the clouds are overhead, 
I still want to be making the most out of my time, and I know that I function the best when there's good light. It wasn't long after that I realized I wasn't gonna be the clouds, but I knew that the sun would be out some time, so I took a seat at the bus stop. Excellent spot here. I'm not sure what exactly is creating the shape and the shadows on the floor, but it works very well as a frame. All the light is concentrated toward the center of the frame, subtly wrapped up by the shadows. All I need to do is wait for someone to walk into the light, and their shadow will fall onto the brick wall on the left. Sorry? It's working. Yeah, it's working. Can we have pictures to each other? Yeah, sure. Totally. Oh, really? How are we going to get the pictures? I can email it to you. Thank you. Wait, just a second. Right after I took the previous shot, I started a conversation with these guys because of my camera. They were as animated as one can get, which you shall see later, and I did send off these photos to them, and I've made myself some new friends. You know who I am? I'm very famous. Yeah, okay. Because I wasn't ready. Okay, was they were natural ones. Yeah, that was a candid one. Okay, ready? Yeah, yeah. Three, two, one. Wow. Wow. It was like 24. Because it's larger format, larger? so there are only 12. Okay. In Can one you go 24 options? I will need another roll. Mm -hmm. I know some skills. You're the bigger guy. Yeah. Kung Fu. Punch here. Punch here. <laughs> oh, Come on, no, do, no, no, do this in slow motion. That's very good. Yeah, need to be, okay, you want some mask? Okay, you. thanks so much. This one is oh. well. Oh, you can have one. Thanks I like so it a lot. <laughs> Bye! That was a pretty random encounter, but very fun nevertheless. Here's a pro tip. If you want to book more clients, you know what you should do? Walk around in a TLR. I saw this reflection and wanted to try creating something, but first, I had to pack up because I was still holding the mask in my hands. I need to free up both of my hands to operate this camera because absolutely everything is manual and obviously it's very precious and it needs to be handled with care. Alright, back at it. Walking along the bank, I came across this spot and noticed how the traffic lights were arranged in a kind of queer way. Somehow, the way they point towards opposite directions was an interesting starting point. I started noticing how even the trees were part of the party and needless to say, their shadows created incredible textures on the ground. I started wondering how this lens would handle the light flare. This was a worthy spot so I took quite a few shots as subjects moved across the frame. In the end, I picked this one and cropped off the unwanted parts. Here's someone's car. I saw the skewed reflections and I thought it would be fun to see what the lens distortion is like. Right now, on my camera, I have my final frame left. I'm not really sure why. The first half of the roll went by really quickly, but once I've reached the final frames, it's taken me ages to find a scene that I feel is worth capturing. Since the last frame, if you know London, I've walked quite a distance and still have yet to find anything I would like to shoot. Finally, finally, I found this scene with sunlight shining through the bus stop, landing on the floor. Okay, so I'm officially done for the day, finally. I think it's been like half an hour before I took each of the final two frames and so it was an hour in total for completing just these two shots. With the last frame, I wasn't sure what was going on there. I saw something that I wanted to capture but I hesitated because I wasn't sure if that was the right moment to press a shutter but somehow I hear a click sound and so I ended up depressing the shutter all the way just in panic. Well, we shall see.
Typically, for a rule of 12, I cut it into 4 strips of 3 so that it could fit perfectly into one page of negative envelopes. And once that's done, it needs to be left to dry so that it could be fit for scanning and storage in general. There are many ways of scanning or, to be precise, digitalizing film so that they can become JPEG files. For me, because I also shoot digital, doing so using my DSLR was the most straightforward one with the least cost involved. I had to get a light pad and am supposed to get a film holder but for now this works alright. This roll has made me really happy. If you count the shots that I've shared, there were in total 12 of them. That is essentially the entire role. That was essentially me sharing my contact sheet with you. Now, don't get me wrong. This hit rate is not supposed to be something that's occupying your head when you're in there shooting photos. No matter how good you get as a photographer, there is always gonna be things that you can do to make your images better. And that's why you should not hold yourself back from taking an image just because you think that it's not best because best technically does not exist. But the reason why I'm sharing this with you is because I think the hit rate is something that is worth taking note of after the shot. So say when you're reviewing your images, a higher hit rate is an indication that you're getting to know your gear better and that you're developing a more coherent way of seeing and noticing things on streets. Having shot film all this while, there were good rolls and there were not so good rolls. Therefore, a hit rate like this is not a standard that I would realistically set for myself. I'm perfectly aware that this is probably gonna be the outlier. There are so many rolls I've shot in which I just failed miserably. So the point here is that while there's no point in trying to be a perfectionist on location, still the proportion of shots that you're actually happy with is something that you should look out for when reviewing your shots. This can sound a bit weird to you, but basically, when I was working on my TLR on a street, I was also at the same time observing myself in relation to my response to the TLR. Because it's not a format that I'm used to shooting, unlike the 35mm format where I kind of know my camera settings in and out, but this is a new format that I had to get used to. So I was in a constant process of forming my own opinion about the TLR for the purpose of street photography. I would say that a TLR is less versatile in a street photography situation than a smaller format camera. The reason for this, as I've came to conclude, is because of the flipped perspective from left to right. It's something I've already made note of early on when I was on the street, but now that I've sat down and actually thought through it, I realized that it is especially so when a subject is moving. When something is moving in a scene, there are two hurdles that I must cross in my head before I can actually come up with a reaction. First of all, I'll have to locate where exactly that thing is. So if it's on the left, on my viewfinder, it's actually on the right. And secondly, the direction in which they're moving. So let's say that person is standing on the right, walking towards the left. In my viewfinder, I would see someone who is standing on the left moving to the right. In order to come up with a response in relation to a new composition, I need to firstly work out where that person is, and secondly, where that person is heading. So that really is taking the speed away from me. It's not really an inherent limitation of the camera. It's more about us being in a digital age. We are very used to the assistance from technology, and that's why we don't really need to do all of this heavy lifting ourselves anymore. Having started first with digital and then moving on to 35mm film, I've always only saw the world in a rectangle. But shooting on a TLR means that I had to learn to see in the square format. In many of these shots, I actually ended up cropping into a 4x5 dimension because I think that the square format simply does not really fit. There were a lot of unwanted space that didn't serve the composition well and that's why I just cropped them off for the sake of completing the compositions. But in other situations, the square format worked really well, especially in relation to these portraits. I really I really liked how these two turned out. This is definitely still a work in progress for me. I had to learn to identify scenes that would work best on a square format as opposed to a rectangular format. To be fair, it's not that much of a great deal, honestly. I can always crop in. I've got no issues totally with cropping as long as that makes your images better. But I still think that it's an interesting visual exercise for myself and that's why I also encourage you to do the same. I know that cameras like these can 
and look really rare they look pretty out of place today and so if you're interested in learning about how to use them I have videos and blog posts about how to load and operate cameras like these in relation to the HP 5 I've also done a review of the 35 mil version of the same film so go check them out it's linked in the cards above thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video bye